Welcome back to Yoshi Entertainment, everybody. So just recently, it blew up all over the media. Like I said, when the last time I made a video about these two, their relationship, this divorce was getting messier and messier as the days pass, as the weeks pass. There's a lot that has happened between the two of them. They broke up. There's a lot of things being thrown around, a lot of allegations. First, they tried to allege that she cheated. Then they alleged that he cheated. Then he came out and tried to release a statement saying that the reason why they couldn't stay together was because they didn't agree on the whole family issue, the family culture, if you will, which a lot of people was calling hogwash on that because that wasn't what he first said going into the relationship. OK, people have receipts. They have a memory. They remember this stuff. He put it on the Internet. He made it seem like he liked the family and cultural aspect of her background, which is part of the reason why he married her and would stay with her. Only for us to sort of put two and two together to figure out that was probably the reason why he absolutely couldn't stand her or one of the reasons why. I guess he didn't actually do research like he tried to make it seem like he did on her culture to find out that when you marry certain women from certain places, you don't just marry them. Quite literally, you marry their entire family. They don't just come to stay with you. They bring their literal entire family as well. So if you're not prepared to have her mother, her father, her brothers, her sisters even in the house with you, grandparents possibly if they're still alive, then you're not ready for that part of the family aspect. She was hyping him up, saying X, Y, Z about him, what she was going to do, certain habits that she had that she wanted to squash in order to be with him, only for her to be allegedly in this relationship being abused and not saying anything because she wanted to stay with him. Now, some people are trying to allege it's because of the money. He got with her for the obvious reasons and she got with him for the money. I can't say yay or nay on that. I did say before that I feel like they both got together for the wrong reasons. Their motivations were not in the right places and they really should have dated some more or got to know each other some more. Definitely went to some therapy before they decided to get in this marriage and have this child because now this child is in the middle of all of this. But I don't even think that marriage counseling was even considered between the two of them. Allegedly, not even him, allegedly. Now, of course, before all of the abuse allegations came out, the whole custody battle was going forward. They were really duking it out. One moment, she's on Sherry Shepard talking about how, you know, even though she said she didn't want kids before, which I knew that was going to come back to bite her in the butt. But she said she didn't want kids before. But when she got in this relationship, all of that changed. She had this beautiful girl and she said that girl, besides God, was the only thing holding her together after that divorce. After she allegedly was blindsided by him filing for divorce. Now, everybody knew this. Everybody heard that. Then he takes her to court for custody. Now, everybody was also calling hogwash on that only because they have common sense that they're using that God gave to them. They're honoring God by using that common sense because they're saying now, Mr. Jeezy, sir, if you really wanted that girl so badly, if you really wanted custody of your child, you would have set an example of that by having custody of your other children. If you wanted your children around you so much, if you wanted to be a family man, you would have had custody of all those other kids. And that's exactly what the judge is going to say whenever he goes up there, unless they've already done it. The moment he goes up there and says he wants custody, he feels like he should be better, a better parent, that he's a better parent than she is, that she doesn't take care of the child. Because that's another thing they were throwing around, which is ridiculous because both of them work. Both of them have very high profile lifestyles. Neither of them are taking care of the baby. Is either going to be a nanny, one of his sisters or something, or her mother and her brother. So I don't even know why that was even relevant. But like I said, the first thing the judge is going to say is, well, you didn't get custody of your other children. So what made this one different? Why all of a sudden do you want to be an involved father now? That's what the judge is going to say. People are also calling hogwash because they remember Jeannie saying out of her own mouth that he had a tendency to be very cold towards her when he didn't get what he wanted or things didn't go his way. So a lot of people feel like him filing for custody was just to pettily get back at her or try to hurt her because, like I said, she didn't already told the whole world that this little girl is her Achilles heel, essentially. Now, some people just felt like she wanted the child simply for the child support money. 
Once again, two people can't be over here complaining about where does the child go after they've made consistently bad decisions as individuals and then parents, and now they have a child that's brought into this world. Once again, it's not fair for the child. I feel bad for their daughter. Although, once again, this is why I say, once again, be careful who you get into a relationship with, who you have children with, who you marry. Because once you make those decisions, if they're the wrong decisions, that's your behind. And if you got children involved, that's really your behind. And now your children are up the creek. Now, she also came out with all this other stuff talking about how he had a history, allegedly, of drinking. That he allegedly got into a golf cart accident because of how drunk he was, allegedly. She even alleged, or they brought in some allegations that he had put hands on his oldest son. That he was very violent and aggressive towards him. She also alleged there was an incident at a hotel where he put hands on her. He tried to choke her going down the stairs. Allegedly, there's documentation of this even, which provides proof if that's true. Like I said, allegedly, there was somebody who worked at the hotel who was sort of like a witness who was there. Not necessarily, I guess, whenever he was going down the stairs or up the stairs, choking her out, allegedly, but was there whenever the heated exchange was happening. So, like I said, sort of a witness. She also documented this with their therapist so like i said i didn't think that they had any kind of counseling before going into this relationship but allegedly they had a therapist during the marriage and she went to her pastor so there's multiple people allegedly that she did document this with who like i said could be used as witnesses to be able to say yes i was aware that this happened yes this actually happened we have the proof etc allegedly there was another incident where they were in the car either going from or coming from somewhere he asked the driver to step out of the car y'all know what that means right he asked the driver to step out of the car then proceeded to verbally abuse her allegedly then put hands on her Apparently, allegedly, it got so bad that she was even trying to get away from him, get out of the car so she could put distance between the two of them. He would not allow her to do so and kept putting hands on her. It almost sounded like a Chris Brown and Rihanna type of situation, just being honest. Allegedly, there was also one other incident where they were at some kind of outing, some kind of party, some kind of gathering. And she went to the bathroom or something of that nature. She was away from him for about 20 to 25 minutes. He got angry because he didn't know where she was. Then demanded that they leave the party. Then they got into another fight in a car. And it ended up with her clothes being ripped. Her having nail marks on her body allegedly because of how hard he was grabbing her during the altercation. That she had got bruised up, scratched up by him, and that she was even wearing certain types of clothes to hide the bruises. There's also the older allegation that she was making where she had went to the house, if I'm not mistaken. She found the baby playing with a duffel bag or a bag of some sort allegedly. And she was trying to get the baby to stop messing with the bag. Tried to pick up the bag, noticed that it was very heavy. Looks in the bag and notices a loaded, you know what, a blicky if you will, in the bag. And was saying that she didn't want her daughter around him and in that environment because he was being negligent where his weapons were concerned. Then he tried to fire back and say that, oh no, she had fixed that to make it look like he was being negligent. Like this was some kind of like setup and then she took a photo. A lot of he said, she said, allegedly. Now she has pictures that she's trying to use to try and be some kind of proof as to him putting his hands on her. I chose not to include them. They're out there, the pictures, but I chose not to include them because they are graphic and I don't want to trigger anybody. Again, I have to say allegedly because of YouTube. Although a lot of people do believe her because they've heard the rumors of him being aggressive and violent and abusive toward his older son long before this ever happened. Like I said, allegedly. Also, people allege they remember rumors and things being said about how he was abusive towards his previous partners in the past. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is again, the patterns of it all. I've said this before. Look at the patterns. Observe the patterns. We are, unfortunately, creatures of habit. People will default to their habits. If they haven't built new ones, if they haven't built better character and integrity, they will continue what they've been doing. The same cycles they've been putting other people through before they got to you, they will put you through. I said this before in a previous video, pay attention to how they treated people before they got to you. 
Nine times out of 10, that's how they're going to treat you because most people don't just wake up and change. People have to want to change. They have to see what they're doing is wrong and they have to want better, not just for themselves, but everybody else who they encounter. Now, of course, there have been plenty of instances where somebody was trying to make it seem like they were a changed person, despite their history of abuse and violence and aggressiveness towards other people. They have tricked people into believing that they were different, only to do a 180, if you will, once they get into a permanent relationship with this person, a married relationship. Or there was an instance where that person did not see any red flags in that particular individual because they did such a good job at hiding them. Again, deceiving people, tricking people into believing that they are some person that they never were. That situation was outside of the control of the person who was being abused. They cannot control some person deceiving people, being deceptive, lying about who they really were, and then showing who they really were behind closed doors. The accountability needs to be placed on the abusive person in that relationship for deceiving the person that they were with. Now, of course, you have the other people who see the red flags and they choose to ignore them. And I would never say that somebody deserves necessarily to be abused because they might have saw red flags and still decided to be with the person. Although there's got to be some accountability taken if you saw red flags and you still decided to be involved with somebody. Like I said, I would never say that that person deserves to be abused as a result of that, although that is not going to stop the consequences. And it's even worse, like I keep saying, when there are children involved. Now, I'm going to let y'all decide which one of those scenarios applies to this situation. Now, let's talk about Jeezy since we're mentioning those people who made it seem like, you know, they were not going to be abusive or they were this person that they were not deceiving people only to do a 180 allegedly behind closed doors. How old is this man and he's still doing stuff like this? How many women has he been with? How many women has he allegedly hurt? How many children has he had? Too many to still be doing something like this allegedly. You mean to tell me after all these years, instead of learning how to treat people better, he's just treated more people worse, essentially. Allegedly. Now, there was something some other people pointed out. I guess they got mad. Some people got mad and they said, oh, she's only pointing out this little abuse, alleging that this happened because he wants to take custody of that child. I told y'all before that I take assault and abuse, whether a woman is the victim or a man is the victim, very seriously. I'm not going to sit up here and say, oh, she should have came out X, Y, Z whenever. Or she should have came out whenever they were first doing this or whenever he first put hands, you know, whatever. I do believe, you know, if a man puts his hands on you once... If a woman puts her hands on you once, it will happen again. And you need to try and get out of that situation if a way is, you know, made for you to get out. Although, like I said, I, I would never sit up here and say, oh, well, she only came out, you know, about this abuse because it was so convenient for her. Like I said, we've seen too many situations like that to be ignorant to the fact that some women will stay in abusive relationships because of how they feel about the partner, whether or not they think they can actually escape and get help and their children that they're taking into account. Maybe she thought she could save the relationship. But I've said this before as well. Once again, once abuse starts, nine times out of 10, it's not going to stop. I do admire her, let me say this, for going to her therapist and her pastor concerning these issues. Now, I would have also went to the police. I think that was a necessary step as well. Although sometimes the answer to the prayer from God concerning abusive relationships is to escape. God doesn't want you getting beat up in your relationship, your life to be getting threatened. That goes for both men and women. Because again, let me put this in perspective for y'all. This man was allegedly choking this woman out on the stairs. She could have tripped, she could have fell, she could have broke her neck. He could have literally taken her out of here. And also the incident, if I'm not mistaken, with him beating her up in the car, that was like three weeks after she had given birth to their child. Anybody who puts hands on you that close after you didn't have birth, they don't care about you and they don't care about your life either. It seems like to me, allegedly, from all this information that she was doing the best she could to save the relationship while he was doing his best to set it on fire and throw it in the trash. And let me mention this also while we're on that topic. Trying to stay in a relationship with somebody to try and save it for your kids will backfire. You should get out for your kids. Otherwise, you end up with children who have mental and emotional damage from watching you be abused and now they feel like they should be abused or that that's normal or that they should be abusing people, which is unacceptable either way it goes. And another thing people don't think about concerning that particular aspect of all of this. So what happens in the case that your spouse gets rid of you? All the abuse 
and then you don't get out because you're trying to save the relationship or you think staying in it for them is the right thing to do. What happens if they bump you off? Then what happens to your child? And God forbid, in the worst case scenario, they get off after what they've done, after deleting you. They don't receive any jail time or legal repercussions. Who do you think they're going to abuse next? Your child. And you won't be there to stop it from happening. Or if in the event they do receive some kind of legal repercussions or they end up in prison, then your child either ends up in the foster care system for the normal people who, you know, don't have a bunch of family members around them to help them, a bunch of money to pay somebody. And we all know what happens in the foster care system. Those children go through hell or they end up with another family member that's not you, that you have to trust is going to raise them right and treat them right, which may or may not happen. No child deserves to have to go through something like that. That's not a scenario. Those are not scenarios you want to take chances with happening to your child. Anyways, like I said before, allegedly if he did put his hands on her like this and he did do this to her and put her through this, first of all, he needs to be put under a restraining order. He needs some jail time, but we know that's probably not going to happen because this is Jeezy. He has money. He's a celebrity. Y'all know the legal system don't work the same for these people, these celebrities. He does still need a restraining order placed against him. He needs to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, and he does not need custody of that child ever. Let me reiterate this once again. This is a reason why you must be careful who you get involved with. You must pay attention to previous patterns. You must be careful who you have children with, who you sleep with who you get yoked up with, who you decide to make these life altering decisions with, go into not just relationships, but everything that you do with the right motives and with the utmost wisdom and discernment. And for the regular people, don't ever put these celebrity relationships on a pedestal. Don't ever think you know what's going on. Don't ever think that these people are something to aspire to be or to be like because you never know the crazy that they're dealing with behind closed doors. You never know the crazy that some of these people are operating in behind closed doors. Once again, pay attention to the patterns and the habits that people display. The people who you come in contact with, the people who you want to be in a relationship with, because they will default to those patterns and those habits nine times out of 10. Pay attention to how they treat their friends, their family members, people who they consider, like I've said many times, beneath them. That is usually a preview of how they're going to treat you, your family, and the kids that you have with them, or your kids who you had in another relationship outside of them, probably worse because they have no obligation to those kids because those kids are not theirs. Now, I'm not saying that people can't change. I'm saying there's only two ways that's going to happen. God making that happen and them wanting it to happen, them wanting to change. And I also mentioned that because some people, I guess, were trying to make it seem like she wasn't a good enough wife or she wasn't submissive enough. There were even some people bringing up that clip of her saying that she had a temper, that she was fiery, and sometimes she liked to pop off at the mouth, whatever. And that that was the reason why he had some kind of right to do what she's alleging that he did or to divorce her. Once again, there is nothing you can do enough of to make somebody do right by you. You could be the most submissive person in the world. If that person chooses to dog you out and mistreat you, that's what they're going to do because that is what's in their heart. They don't want to treat people right because they don't have a do right mind. They don't have a do right spirit. They don't want to do the right thing. They don't want to treat people right. They don't have empathy. No amount of anybody doing the right thing that goes for men or women is going to change that. And on the flip side, just because she popped off at the mouth did not give him an excuse to put his hands on her, allegedly, like I said earlier. The fact that anybody would even resort to that shows they have a lack of self-control and a lack of emotional maturity and intelligence. You can't make me believe that we live in a day where the women are the ones supposedly lacking in emotional maturity and intelligence when you have these scenarios where the men are the ones putting their hands on people, putting their hands on women whenever they're angry, whenever they're triggered. Clearly there's a problem here. And one person acting crazy as a result of another person acting crazy, it's just plain straight up stupid and ridiculous. And it only makes the situation worse. Who's diffusing the situation? Who's being the bigger person? Who's helping instead of making it worse? Anyways, I hope this all gets sorted out. I'm not gonna say I hope nothing else comes out about this because the last time I did that, oh, so much more came out about it. And not just this situation, but other ones. I hope that they prioritize that child's needs because a lot of times that gets lost in translation during these situations. Anyways, y'all let me know. Y'all think about all of this down in the comments below respectfully. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Y'all all have a very blessed, beautiful, and safe day.